Finally, the last job I just had paid over $200,000. I mean, I really done well for myself. I worked as a telecom tech. I worked as a Cisco engineer, IT administrator. Worked, I worked for a couple of dot-com companies and I've had my own business off and on for about the past 15 years doing technology contracting. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the five skills that I think you should have to launch your tech career with zero experience. Now, why should you listen to me? Well, I've been in the tech industry ever since the mid 90s. Uh, I've worked as a telecom tech. I've worked as a Cisco engineer, IT administrator. Uh, I've been worked, I've worked for a couple of dot-com companies and I've had my own business off and on for about the past 15 years doing technology contracting. In this video, I want to share with you the five things that I think if you can bring to the table, you can help get yourself in the door, which is what really matters. Then after you're in, then you can begin to build out your skills to advance your career. I got my first job when I was about 24 years old and I was making some decent money for back of the time. And as I mentioned, did all these different things and each time got a little more, a little more, a little more. Finally, the last job I just had paid over $200,000. I mean, I really done well for myself. Now, do I have a college degree? No, I don't. I don't have a college degree. I was going to college a little bit before I got into the IT space. I was actually a music major, um, but I ended up working for my dad's company and I just kind of, he had a telecom company and I was doing some different things and just kind of worked my way into it. And really I didn't have to study. I didn't have to, I didn't have to like go to get formal training. I just kind of taught myself and you can do these things too. All right, well, let's dive into the, um, into the skills, and I think this will be kind of become more apparent as we go through them. All right, well, skill number one is going to be having a tech knowledge that's a mile wide and an inch deep. Now, if you're familiar with that expression that was used to describe the way that you were supposed to study for the CISSP, which is a cybersecurity uh, certification, and I'm not saying you need to worry about a cybersecurity certification, I'm just saying that expression, mile wide, inch deep, is a great way to express the, the skill that I think you should have. Here's why it matters. When you go into an interview with somebody, they're going to be probing a little bit to find out if you're familiar with certain topics. They're gonna to try to drop little acronyms here and there like DNS or DHCP. You know, they wanna find out, you know, d d does that mean anything to you? Because by doing that, they're gonna be able to gauge how much knowledge or how much experience you've had now, the better that you can respond to those, you know, in other words, hit that ball back over the net is more likely to make you sound like you're an industry veteran, even if you're not. Well, how can you get that skill if you don't have it? Listen, there's so much free information out there. You don't have to pay for any of it. Just spend a few minutes every day, several times a day, looking online at videos like my channel, for example. So if you haven't subscribed, please do, because that's exactly the kind of stuff that's on my channel. Spend a few minutes either reading articles or watching videos, and here's the trick. Don't get too deep on any one of them. I mean, yeah, you're gonna run into something you really like and you're gonna be pulled towards it, I know, but again, we're trying to get a mile wide breadth. We wanna know about a little bit about cybersecurity. We wanna know a little bit about networking. We wanna know a little bit about server operating systems and desktops and Linux. We don't need to be an expert. We just need to know a little bit about a wide array. All right, and that will serve you well when you finally get in front of somebody who's interviewing you. All right, the next one, skill number two, it isn't so much a skill as it is a task, and that is get an industry certification, any certification. I'll explain in a minute. Technical recruiters will use certifications as a way to determine if they should even talk to you in the first place. So if you've got a resume with no certifications on it, it's a good chance that's gonna get pitched straight away. In order for you to make that first cut to get what they call a screening interview, you need to have at least one or two certifications on your resume, but they don't need to be fancy ones. You don't need to spend six months and $400 taking an certification exam. There are lots of free tech certifications out there. I'll give an example. I just recently, last year, I got three cybersecurity uh, certifications in Fortinet. Uh, on a site called IBM Skills Build. I'll leave you a link in the description. And there are many other sites like that, many other types of certifications similar to that. In fact, just to make a point, that certification in particular, I think I got all three of those like in less than two weeks. I didn't even do it full time. I was just kind of doing it part time. So there's some easy peasies out there you can get because just hammering this point home, 
any certification is better than no certification, even if it's not in the one that you're, the, the field that you're trying to get into. Just get something, all right? Let's talk about professionalism and communication skills, which is item number three, skill number three. First of all, first impressions do matter, okay? I know that sounds cliche, but it does matter. So the way that you present, the way that you communicate, whether you have an interview in person or whether you get an interview over a Zoom meeting, which, which actually, by the way, is pretty common now in the tech industry, those are first impressions are gonna matter. That's why it's so important for you to be on point with your, with your dress, your communication skills, your eye contact. Maybe you're one of these people who has a lot of style. You know, you've, maybe you've got some tattoos, you've got some piercings, you've got this hair that's really great. I'm fine with that, but don't bring that to the interview. Put that to the side for a second. We're trying to get into the IT or tech space, okay? Just check your style for a minute. Dress business-like, all business. Talk all business, stay all business. Then once you get in and start moving your way up, then you'll bring your style back, that's fine. All right, so first impressions matter. The way that you communicate really matters. And there's another point about this. You know, if I'm a hiring manager and I'm looking at you as a potential candidate, one of the things I'm gonna be kind of sizing you up is, is this somebody I can put in front of my customer? Now, my customer could be an internal user or could actually be a real outside the company user. The point is, is that you know, to the IT manager, you're kind of like part of an army that he needs to send into battle to solve his problems. So he's sizing you up or she's sizing you up to that effect. What do you look like? How do you talk? How do you present? You get my point? All right, so professionalism and communication, put the style to the side, just all business for the interview. Skill number four, initiative and self-direction. In other words, your ability to work without supervision. Do you take ownership of things? You'll wanna be able to bring those examples to the interview. They're kinda of hard to prove in person in the interview, but if you've got stories of how you've demonstrated in the past, that's what I want you to bring. And don't worry that that example didn't happen in IT space. Initiative and self-direction is independent of what field it's in. If you have stories in the past, and maybe you worked at a fast food restaurant and you were somebody who demonstrated a little bit of leadership or maybe you solved problems before you had the manager had to even tell you, bring those stories with you. Because again, back to the manager's perspective, he's looking to bring somebody into his army. He wants to know, are you somebody who's gonna make things harder for me because I have to hover over you all the time? Or are you somebody who I can send out there and you solve problems on your own and make my life easier? Skill number five is experience. Now I know you're thinking, wait a minute, Steve, I thought this whole video was about if I had no experience. Yes, that is still true. But here's what I want you to do. Think about experience as not necessarily just work history. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you're kind of into IT, you're into technology, right? So chances are you've already done something. It may not have been in a paid capacity, but you know, maybe you helped the high school math teacher rearrange the, the computers in the math lab. Maybe you helped the neighbor reinstall a broken hard drive and reinstall the operating system. Maybe you've set up a network in your own home. Maybe you've watched videos on my channel and you've learned how to do certain things. Anything that you can point to that demonstrates some kind of technical experience is going to be better than nothing. It's kind of like the certifications I mentioned earlier. Any certification is better than no certification. So any kind of technical experience from the past, even if it's not work history, is gonna be better than nothing. Now you might be thinking, well Steve, where do I put that on my resume if it's not work history? Usually on your resume, you've kind of got like your bio line, you've got your, your, history, your work history section. Usually there's a part of the bottom, if you don't already have it, you might consider it, where you, you put things like interest, skills, uh, achievements, things like that. Find a way to weave it in there, okay? The second thing is, that be prepared to bring that story with you to an interview. So if you, if you make the cut, you get an interview, be prepared to have those stories of your technical experience from the, back, from the past. Because you have to think about this for a second. When a manager is looking at you, oftentimes when a manager selects a candidate, they then have to go talk to their boss and explain to their boss why they want to hire you. Well, if their boss says, well, does this guy have any experience? Well. If you've already given that person some examples, they say, yeah, he's got some experience. He installed his own home network and you know, he's kind of like the, the, the guy in the neighborhood that's known to be the PC go-to guy, all right? So I just want you to change the way you think about experience. It doesn't only have to just be work history. 
All right, so that is my advice to you, my five skills. Um, if you are actively trying to get into the tech world, the tech industry, I highly recommend you subscribe to my channel. I've got more stuff coming. I've actually even building a course too, which is gonna be really great for actually spoon feeding you the information directly if you're trying to work your way into, that, into the networking field. Um, and I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to you on the next one. We'll see you later.